this morning. I'm sure you've gone over to see his booth and the elves on camera, as well as all the footage that you have on your goggles, which we'll talk about as well. So, Miles, thank you for joining us. So you brought the Ozo with you so we can show it obviously to everyone watching and here and online. So we have the Nokia Ozo. Uh, we haven't seen this camera yet, we're going to talk a little bit about the mechanics of it as well as the workflow on set. A lot of people are wondering if they haven't shot the video yet. Uh, so maybe let's start with it. So tell me a little bit about the mechanics of it as far as the design. So what we have here are eight different sensors. Each sensor is 2K by 2K. And we also have eight individual microphones on here as well. So you get the whole 360 degree spatial audio. Uh, in the back here, you know, it's a little hard to see, but we have the media. That's 500 gigs, that'll run you about 45 minutes. And then the battery will last you about an hour. Now, if you're going to record longer than that, you have the option of taking a BNC, Maybe putting it into, say, a hyperdeck or something like that, something that doesn't really press the image, and you can record off SSD cards for much longer. You can also play back to it. Exactly, you can play back to Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the sound aspect of it as well, because you and I were talking about that offline a little bit. The Ozo does have eight different microphones around the camera, so that's usually it can be placed to tell the story or at least the Exactly. So, what a lot of directors are doing is, since it's 360 degrees, they're using the audio as cues to have people look at the image. And that's very fascinating. Um, I, my boss actually told me a story where he was, he was very new in the VR world. And he went and watched something, and they were shooting uh, a beach scene, and the waves were rolling. And he said, oh wow, this looks great. But as soon as he turned his head and looked back at the houses on the beach, it sounded like the waves were still rolling in on it. So it just totally took him out of the experience. So that's why 360 degree audio is very important. I've been thinking about that too, as I watched it with VR, and it seems like the eyeline of either actors or the documentary that you're doing is really important to put the goggles on and you expect this to be the Yeah, it definitely, you become the camera. I mean, if you, if you look very closely, it looks like two eyes. It was actually spaced out so that many the humans are biased. So let's talk a little bit about the workflow as well. So with the Ozo, I know you teams are very fair to this camera. First of all, it's one of the first high-end you know, production cinema VR cameras out there. And I would say the reason, there are a couple of reasons for that, but one of them is raw camera. Make the points raw. It does, yes. And, and one of the, the benefits is you don't have to pull out individual SD cards for each sensor. It comes down as one file. So you can just bring it right into our post processing software and get to work right away. So you save it as a little raw file. I know that's the file format. And the other rare thing that's really important to mention is the live TV aspect. Let's talk about how that works. Yes, exactly. So if you come over, if anybody wants to want to come over to the booth a little bit later on, you can actually put on an Oculus DK2 and view what you're seeing, what you're shooting in 3D while you're shooting. That's a huge bonus. So I know there's a couple questions out there probably about what the workflow is like. So let's talk about what you have to have on set and what you expect to deliver to clients. Sure. So there's a couple different ways you can do it. Uh, right now we're Mac based. Who knows, maybe in the future that will change. You know, fingers crossed. Um, uh, so right now we're using a D700, I believe it is. Uh, so you can use the full Mac uh, Pro on set if you want to. But you also have the ability, if you want to, to use like say Mac Plus Pro. So if you want to go slider, I would use a Mac Pro. You're not going to see the full 30 frames a second, but to, to judge your exposure, to see your shot, to set up where your walking is, and where your stitch line is, works. I was going to say the fact that you can show either the director or the client the live view is a perspective, uh, especially if they're new to VR. Oh, and yeah, that, that helps out tremendously. And one of the great things we have is, seriously, please come check it out afterwards. You can actually see where your stitch lines are. And since, since each lens is 195 degrees, we have six degrees of overlap. So you can move your seams, which really helps. I you know at NAB this year in April, that's what one of the new improvements was with the software and the firmware that came out, with that you can pick your stitches and then also like, stitch in the software. Yeah, exactly. So we allow you to export out to CityGames, MPX, OpenEXRs, and MP4. So if you already have a workflow, please go ahead and use it. We're not trying to hold you on to ours. But we feel ours is very good. We're fantastic options. We can stitch. Well, that's what I like about it. Uh, if any of you 
you are here in the VR is that it, you have definitely created a system that is all in one, let's say. So you could definitely stay in the Nokia Ozone software and deliver footage to clients or to YouTube, depending on the environment. Exactly. It's a, it's a huge bonus. So as we're talking about projects, because I know you've probably seen a lot of different things out there. You probably can't mention them, but I just wanted to hear maybe what you get excited about about VR, or what have you seen that people can relate to as projects? Yeah, sure. So I can't really talk too much about some of the stuff, but um, I know that somebody has just taken one over ever, so I'm dying to see that footage. Um, what I really am excited about is the non-traditional uses. So yeah, you can use it to, to shoot great you know, action scenes or, or spooky stuff, but med schools are buying it as well, and they're shooting surgery and then playing it back for their students. So that's a huge bonus. It's, it's totally something I would have never thought about. And Definitely from a news standpoint as well, or you, you mentioned um, people with disabilities or things that you can't you know, get to a certain place, the fact that you can share that with them. That's a huge So that's actually what I get excited about more is the human aspects of that, which kind of brings us back to the immersive part of VR. So let's talk about you know, maybe some of the footage that you have in your goggles or Right. So we have a, a, a bunch of different scenes over there. We've got a, a, a couple really nice spooky stuff that you need to see. Uh, we have a nice action footage as well, which is very interesting because they didn't lock off the camera. They actually mounted it above the head of the actor, and he's running around. So when you look down, you can see arms and legs, um, and, and it's great. I thought I was going to get seasick. Nope. No, no, it's fantastic, yeah. That's kind of funny watching you like, get excited about you know, oh, watching yeah. other people see it. I was on, on pre-production for that. It's called Argos. It was, it was great. Um, and I, when they picked up the camera and started hand-holding it, I was like, ah, this is never going to work. And then I looked at the footage and I was like, wow, that really does work. It's fantastic. So I love the fact that people aren't sticking to tradition. They're trying new things. And that's a huge, huge thing. I think that's one of the you know, kind of messages about VR is that allowing us to kind of question what type of viewing environment do we want, and we want the message to be. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's an overused cliche by far, but it is a lot of fun. Yeah. So we mentioned workflow, but I kind of want to put it a little more straightforward about what the setup is. So you pointed out the mag, right? So there's yeah. a mag and a camera. It reports 50 minutes of record time, which is exactly. 500 gigs of Ozo raw. So whether you're on a laptop or a Mac Pro tower, you can save the raw, right? That would be your first setup. Obviously, that's the most important. And then with the Ozo software, you can decide what your deliverables are, right? Or what, what they need right away versus what you need to farm out to the render farm. Exactly. So we, we yes. And, and we, one of the great things I think is, is fantastic is we have the ability to make these uh, files called 360 degree editorials. They're basically dailies that you can actually add your audio cues. So if you had somebody mic'd up and they walked from 90 degrees to 180 degrees, you could take that into your audio software and then pan the audio. And actually, when we were talking about stitching, one of the things I wanted to mention is I learned stitching before I learned how to operate in VR. And I think that was a really good practice because I saw how you can add so much more time right, to the editor if, or the stitcher if you haven't placed the camera in a you know, great place. So make sure that talent is not in the middle of a stitch, right? Exactly, exactly. And that's one of the great things with um, remote our program. You can see the stitch lines before you start shooting, so you can log your scene for so I also know at NAB this year, uh, Nokia also announced the Ozo Live setup. So maybe let's just talk about what the concept of that is or what's the purpose of it. Yeah, of course. Uh, in fact, we just released it last week officially. Uh, and I was down at Austin City Limits. We had a six camera shoot going on down there. A great production company did a fantastic job. We had cameras on stage, so the faces was playing, it was right in front of you when you were looking at it. They were switching between the different cameras. And they had the ability to zero in where they want you to look. So before they switch to one of the other cameras, say the base is moved over here, and so you're looking this way, they can make it so you're automatically looking at it. So you can pinpoint which one of the people, the, the viewer, to actually see. Yeah. Now there is some additional software, or additional hardware. You need like a, a streamer and a coder and things like that. But, but it is out there. It is available. And then also an element of that, right, is the fact that the the firmware, or I guess the SDK, right, for your player is yeah. now available to other manufacturers. Yes, it is. It is. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but I 
Oh yeah, definitely. So we're we're teaming up with almost everybody who can get our hands on and talking to them about how we can get into their their So one thing I know about Rukia with the Ozo in the last let's say nine months is how many firmware updates and software updates they have had, right? So I've seen a lot of changes. The user interface is very I would say easy, but very user intuitive, right? Which is good, that's what we look for. And then also, I wanted to ask you, and it brings me to my question of uh, what can we expect next? Or what do you think? We're going to be able to tell us how long it but what do you think uh, the updates would lead us to? Um, yeah, I can't really talk about it, but I can say there's a big one coming out really, really soon. Really soon. Yeah. Well, just the fact that you're continuing to update the same uh, innovation. The engineers in Finland are constantly asking us for feedback from the field and they're always making things, uh, you know, boosting and improving things. It's, it's really, really nice. And I also want to make sure that everyone here definitely goes and checks out the Marquia booth and the goggles. And also at Able City across the coast, then in Chicago we teach Nokia Ozo classes. So if you are more interested or you want to be certified as a technician, you can do that here or in New York or LA. Uh, so that's obviously a great moment as well. And make sure you check out the booth. Thanks, Miles, for joining me.